Hey everybody, Adam here for True North Wilds. This is my trip report for my second big backcountry trip that I took this spring with my vacation time. As you can see, I'm still on vacation and enjoying it. I got a few days left before I have to shave and get rid of this whole homeless look that I got going on here. Wilson Lake is in Ontario. It is just east of Nopeming Park, so a lot of the same terrain. It's, it's all the same sort of Canadian Shield type of country. Um, it's just over the border on the Ontario side. The trip was awesome. I went with Colin um, and his dad Ron. Uh, it was my first time meeting Ron. Of course I've been all, all over the place with Colin and done a lot of fishing with Colin. Me and Colin were on the kayaks and Ron was in a canoe which was modified and had a really neat little setup that he built himself and it actually had a uh, I don't remember what size motor it was but it had a, an actual motor on it. So we launched in Raynar Lake. Raynar Lake is just on the Ontario side of the border of Nobleming Park, um, past Booster and Davidson. Uh, it saved us, saved us a couple kilometers of paddling and a pretty nasty portage up the embankment and down the other side to get from Davidson to Raynar. So we probably saved a good hour and a half, two hours by doing it that way. Parked off the side of the road, there was a nice little area, parking area that we, uh, we're easily able to get our trucks out of the way. We launched on this little culvert on Raynar Lake and headed out across Raynar Lake. It was a really nice paddle across Raynar Lake. The water was calm. The water was a great temperature. The sun was out. It was a clear day, just all around, just gorgeous day to be on the water. It was really pleasant paddling across there. We went at a really casual speed. We were just enjoying being out there. We weren't in any particular hurry. It was about six kilometers across uh, from the launch point to the first portage. It's a long, narrow lake, and we basically went from one end the whole length to the other end. Um, took up a good chunk of the morning, but like I said, it was a really pleasant paddle. We passed by one big rock sticking out of the water that had these birds on it that were really, really not happy to see us there. They were very, very angry, and you can hear them here squawking at us. Throughout the whole day of traveling, it was pretty funny that we would be paddling along and catch up to Ron, who would be sitting there fishing, and then when we'd catch up, he'd zoom off with the canoe, with the motor, um, get ahead of us, and he'd go and he'd be trolling and fishing all over the place while we paddled to catch up. He was having a pretty good time just staying ahead of us, and uh, he got a lot of fishing time in <laughs> before we ever got a line in the water, just because he had the motor, which was... Pretty funny and it was pretty awesome that he could do that and still be carrying all of our gear with him. <laughs> the portages into Wilson were fairly easy. They were good beginner, beginner, medium sort of level. There was nothing that was super difficult to cross. They're all fairly short and they're all fairly well maintained surprisingly. I couldn't find a lot of information about this route online so I assumed that there wouldn't see much traffic and that there wasn't a lot of people going through. It turns out this is a pretty well used route. I can see why after going through the portages. The portages were really easy. Uh, if you've done portaging before, these are really easy. If you haven't done portaging before or if you, this is your first trip, this is a good intro to portaging and a good setup to get you used to sort of how the backcountry can be, especially in the Canadian Shield. The reason I say that is because the portages, none of them were long. They were all fairly short. I think the longest one that we did was about 250 meters, which isn't that bad. But you're going, on a lot of them, you're going up and over a rock. And that's basically your portage, is that you basically leave one lake, climb up one rock, like a rock sort of shelf, climb up, a little bit down the other side to the next lake. That was the majority of the portaging. There wasn't any long winding trails. They're all pretty straightforward. The elevation change from the launch point to Wilson, according to my GPS, was somewhere in the area of 500 feet. Um, I don't remember exactly. It was 500 or 560, something like that, of elevation climb. So a lot of the portaging on the way in was uphill, but that just means a lot of the portaging on the way out was downhill. So, I mean, it's a balance and it, it ended up working out pretty well. One of them, well, I forget which all these little ponds and lakes have names. I forget what they all are, but one of the middle ones that we were going through, it was just another one of those sort of small ones. I got to the shore of it and I looked down and there's this big school of suckers swimming around. 
right up to the bank there, right under this little grass outcrop, right around my feet. There was a turtle there swimming around with them. There was a bunch of baby perch um, in this really, like I call it a pond. There it was not a huge body of water. The middle of it was maybe six feet deep, so not not deep. And then there's all this school of suckers swimming around. So it was really, really cool to see. Um, it's always fun to just go out and see wildlife and see fish and see things moving around and just that's that's part of the experience it's why you go out there so that was really really enjoyable the second biggest lake after Raynar that we had to cross was Bain Lake Bain Lake was a really cool lake it had all these little islands it's not it's not huge but it was still a pretty decent size it was a little bit of a paddle to get from the portage across the other side and we took our time and we enjoyed it um on the way out I took out the drone and I flew the drone around it and this is kind of the footage of that lake. I thought it was just a really cool looking lake and a, just a perfect backcountry Canadian Shield lake. So I wanted to get some good footage with the drone and kind of give an example. So this is this is not really relevant to the trip overall. I just wanted to sort of show off um, a little bit of the drone flying and, and the terrain that we had there and uh, just the, this beautiful, beautiful lake in the middle of nowhere and really a no-name lake it doesn't have campsites on it it's just you pass through it on the way from point a to point b but when you stop and actually look at it, it in itself it was just a really beautiful lake so um that that's what this is uh moving on from there it was not too long after that it was that was getting towards wilson it wasn't long after that that we got to wilson lake we got to wilson lake with lots of daylight left it took us a lot less time to get there than we had planned on which was a really nice bonus. This is my first look at Wilson. I looked around, I looked back and forth, and I thought, wow, what a gorgeous lake. I could tell as soon as we finished the portage and we're standing on the shore looking at it, this was going to be a really, really nice lake to camp on. Even though there was none of the facilities that you find at a maintained site, uh, say in Manitoba, where they have the firebox, and sometimes they have picnic tables and latrines and stuff like that. Even without those luxuries, this site was just perfect. It was, you couldn't ask for a better backcountry site. So we got really lucky that we found this place. Um, but looking around the lake as we were paddling around and sort of scouting out areas, and as I was sort of flying my drone around and looking, there is a lot of places on this lake that would be really, really nice campsites. We didn't do any fishing the first day uh, other than from shore because we, by the time we got there, got unloaded, got camp set up, uh, we were getting pretty late in the day. We were mostly paddled out. It was, you know, still, uh, I think it took us about six and a half hours to get in there. So it was still a lot of paddling and a lot of effort to get in there. So we didn't really feel like taking the boats out and paddling around anymore. Colin caught a nice little walleye offshore. We had jacks offshore, which was nice and fun. And just a beautiful evening. We were pretty tuckered out. We called it a night pretty early. The second day, of course... Um, obviously we're going to spend most of the day fishing. Colin and Ron went out on the canoe for a little while, um, fished around a little bit, got some pike, nothing, uh, no walleye or lake trout yet. We were getting a little bit uh, interested to see if there was actually going to be lake trout. We had the fish finders on the kayaks and so we were looking around at the water. Um, there was spots to go down to 140 feet, lots of straight up and down cliffs in the water. So the second day, uh, like I said, we fished around me and Colin went exploring up the big canyon area is sort of what I called it. Wilson Lake, one of the defining features of it was this long, narrow arm. So you have sort of the main lake and then this long, narrow arm that stretches off the lake. And it looks like however long back in history, it used to probably be a canyon because in the middle of it, it went down to 50, 60 feet. And then we had those nice black rock smooth cliffs on the side which were really cool um, at some points the channel that we were paddling in was maybe only a hundred yards wide uh, so it was just really cool I we didn't really catch any fish in there but to go into the end and back I just really wanted to see it uh, again being sort of an environmental nerd um, and Colin loved it with uh, his geology stuff he was enjoying himself it was a really nice paddle we got rewarded we got to the end and I actually caught my first walleye for the trip which was nice. It was big, nice eater size, uh, somewhere around 20 inches. I caught it on uh, 
a, a surface spoon of all things. It was really weird, but I was happy. I was really, really happy to uh, get a walleye for the spring. Um, I didn't want to get skunked this trip. <laughs> and so the very first day of full fishing, it was nice to get that nice and early. And then that was uh, a nice little uh, meal for us. So I, I kept that. We paddled all the way back out. We still didn't find any lake trout. Went to bed, or I went to bed anyway. And this is where I got to give some credit to Ron. Ron is a trooper. Ron, I thought I was a pretty dedicated fisherman. Ron kind of put me to shame on this trip. I don't have any footage of it because I was in the tent sleeping. <laughs> and Ron was still up well into the evening, casting from shore. This guy's looking out from my tent towards the lake, and I just see a silhouette of him holding up a fish. This big fish. I don't know what size it was. It was, like I said, it was dark. We didn't measure it. That one lake trout... The next day, the third day that we were there, um, fed all three of us with leftovers. So it was a nice fish. He ended up catching another little, a smaller one, still a good-sized fish, but another smaller one offshore the evening of the third day. I mean, the guy, the guy was a machine. He was awesome. I didn't catch any lake trout the entire trip. I had one on the line. I got it up to the boat, and then it spit the hook. <clears throat> so at least I saw one. I did get the walleye. I got some really nice jacks. I was really happy. I was jigging with uh, a white tube jig, and I brought up two really good-sized jacks. I mean, we didn't keep them to eat them or anything like that, but I was just really happy. I love catching pike. I love catching big pike. I didn't get measurements on them, but you can see, you can see on the footage that they were a decent size. They, I, I'm estimating they were at least 36 inches. They, they looked like that three-footer sort of class of pike. Um, so that was a lot of fun to get on the kayak. So the third day was a little bit of a letdown with the wind and just sort of miserable. It got rained on a little bit, but uh, the rain led up towards the late afternoon. The wind kept up. We were pretty well sheltered where we were, so we basically just sat in camp. We had a nice fire going. We enjoyed the fire, watched the wind and watched the water from our campsite. Didn't get to do any fishing for the rest of the day other than in the morning there. So that was a little bit disappointing, but it was a nice day to just sit in camp. The fourth day, we woke up and packed up, and that was our last day there, so... We packed everything up and we headed out, fished our way across Bain again, fished our way across Raynor. So that was our experience with Wilson Lake. Um, all in all, it was a really great trip. This, like I mentioned earlier, this was a brand new lake and a brand new route for me. I wasn't sure quite what to expect. It turned out to be just fantastic. The route being well-traveled while surprising was a good surprise because the the route was easy to find, it was easy to follow, the portages were clear, we didn't have to worry about clearing any fallen trees or pushing our way through overgrown bush, anything like that. We never really had any issues paddling. Uh, it was, it was, I mean, you couldn't ask for more. It was a great trip. Colin and his dad were a lot of fun. Um, it was nice to meet Ron and it was nice to spend a couple days with him. It's a route that I would recommend to anybody to give a shot. You can get there in a day. If you just need to go somewhere for overnight, it's a pretty easy trip, especially if you have canoes only and not kayaks. We take a little bit longer everywhere we go because we have the kayaks that we have to drag. There's no easy way to carry the kayaks. Um, they're just not balanced like a canoe is. But if you have a canoe and you can carry it and do the portage properly, like portages are actually supposed to be done, um, you can make it there in half the time that we make it there. So that's a good one day trip. If you want to go somewhere to get a really nice campsite, spend a couple days and just have a really nice camping experience. It was a great lake to do that. The lake itself was beautiful. The water was great, nice and clear. All kinds of structure, all kinds of cliffs, all kinds of nice scenery. Lots of birds around, lots of loons and things like that. Bait fish everywhere. The fishing was good. With There's walleye, there's lake trout, there's jacks. Um, so if you want to go somewhere and camp and fish, it's a good one. It's just a really good lake. I would recommend it to anybody to check it out. It's a good beginner level lake. If you're brand new to portaging, the portages that you're going to do on this route are a good introduction to going maybe somewhere a little bit more difficult. Um, so yeah, I mean, just all around a really great route, a really great trip, and I couldn't ask for much more. I hope that was informative. If anybody has any questions about the route, anything I didn't really discuss here, absolutely feel free to leave a comment down there. And uh, I'll do my best to answer. I, I'm not one of those guys that tries to hide any information about the routes I go on. I encourage 
everybody to go check out a place like this. Um, I don't want to keep it for myself or anything like that. So any questions, just ask. I will definitely answer. Um, any other comments, any other feedback, of course, leave it down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It always helps me out for the channel. If you're not already, don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash True North Wilds, on Instagram, at True North Wilds, on our blog site, truenorthwilds.com, where at the same time that this is uh, uploaded, I will also put a blog post written by Colin from his perspective of the trip. Um, so I encourage you to check that out, give it a read. It's a good supplement to this video. Uh, as usual, thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you outside.